Welcome back. In this video we're going to create the game servlet for our guessing game MVC edition. Recall that in the MVC software design pattern the C portion is carried out by the servlet. That is, the servlet is used to act as the controller. The primary concern of the controller is to marshal all of the resources that are needed to get the job done. And when completed, it should pass control over to the appropriate view component. Let's give a little bit more thought as to what our game servlet will be doing. We're going to do this in a diagram that's called an IPO diagram, Input Process Output. Let's think of our game servlet as pretty much just a black box. Things come in as input and things go out as output. So as input, our primary data that's coming into the game servlet is a guess. That'll be entered through the index.jsp form. User places the guess in the text box, hits the submit button, and then we get a request going to the server to run game servlet. On the output side, we're basically going to want to let the game servlet figure out what the results of the guess are by comparing it to the target and then decide where the view should go and what should be said on the view. So our primary output from the game servlet is the message. Did you get it right? And if so, congratulations. Did you get it wrong? And if so, is it high or low? The output of the game servlet, primarily the message, has as its destination one of the two JSPs, either the guess or correct.jsp, where we'll show the outcome of the guess. In addition, because we are saving some of the data we need as hidden text boxes, we'll need to retrieve those as both input data, update them in the game servlet, and then send them along as output data as well. So the actual target guess and the number of guesses needs to come in as input and be passed along as output to the target view. How are we going to get this accomplished? Here we see the inputs and the outputs in our diagram. What about the process? Basically, what needs to happen to convert those inputs to outputs? Inside of our game servlet, we will need to get the input data. Once we have it stored as local variables we can use, we can then compare the target and the guess. If the guess is incorrect, we're going to want to set the message, something like guess higher or guess lower, update the number of guesses by incrementing that number, then pass control to guess.jsp. On the other hand, if the guess is correct, we're going to want to set the message to something like congratulations, you got it in X number of guesses, and then we'll pass control to the correct.jsp. With the process and inputs and outputs in mind, we're now ready to actually code the game servlet. Here we are back in Eclipse with our project already created and stubs for the various components. Game number and index.jsp are fairly complete. Game servlet, no code is in game servlet save only that which was generated when we created the game servlet in the first place. Double click on the game servlet.java tab to get started coding. You recall several methods are already generated in the servlet. Two important methods are the do get and the do post. We're only going to code one of these. Inside the do get stub, type this dot do post request comma response semicolon. Any do get message will come along to the server. The server will register that and then basically pass control to the do post method and pass along the request and the response objects. Again, this is just a lazy way to only have one method coded, but allow either to work. So we're going to write our code in the do post method. Recall, the first thing we need to do is get the input data. Also recall that we're going to also recall that we're going to use our game number to store the various values. This time let's create a game number object to store the guess and then we'll get the guess and set the game number value simultaneously. To do that we'll use game number, call this one guess equals new game 
number. Notice an error message. We have not yet imported game number. So let's click in the quick fixes on import game number. Error should go away. Now let's set the guess. Guess dot set value. Our set value method requires an integer to be passed, so we're going to parse the result of the text box as an integer. Parseint takes a string. The string is coming from the request object parameter. which was originally from the guest text box. So in this case we received from the guest text box the value, we convert it to an integer and we immediately set our game number value. Let's do the same thing with our guest number and our target. To make it easy we can copy the guest number Recall that these values should match the text boxes in the index.jsp, which is the source of the data. Let's double check to see if those are correct. Guess, guess number, and target. Guess, text box here, target. Notice we have guesses in our text box for the number of guesses, so we need to make sure that one matches. Let's change this one all the way to guesses. to keep it consistent. One of the things in our process is complete. Next we're going to need to compare the guess with the target. Comparison is done with if statements, so if guess dot get value is equal to target dot get value. In this case, guess is correct. Else, guess is incorrect. In here, we also need to decide if it's higher or lower. If guess dot get value is greater than target dot get value guess is high else guess is low our basic structure for deciding whether the guess is high or low but now what do we do in each case well we're going to have to set a message Let's go ahead and create a string variable to hold our message. If the guess is correct, we're going to want to say message equals congrats. You got the correct number in guesses dot get value guesses so that should result in an appropriate message says you got the correct number in so many guesses one minor error put a plus there to correct that the guess is incorrect I am going to need to increment the guesses regardless of which direction is there. I notice I have a minor error in my if statement. Let's add the parentheses there to correct that. If the guess is high, I want to say something like guess again. The 
last guess was high. Otherwise, if the guess is low, otherwise, last guess is low. Let's take a quick look back at our process diagram. We wanted to get the input data. We've already done that. We compare the target and the guess. Check, we've done that. If the guess is incorrect, we set a message. We've incremented the number. We've done that. Pass control to guess.jsp. We still have yet to do that. If guess is correct, we need to set the message. We've done that, but we've not passed control to correct.jsp. Well, the J2EE library includes a special class that is useful for passing control from the controller to the next component. This is called a request dispatcher class. The request dispatcher looks like the code shown here. We'll create a request dispatcher, in this case we call it dispatcher, equals, and instead of calling a constructor to set up the first request dispatcher, the request object itself has a method which will give us the appropriate request dispatcher. So we'll use request.getRequestDispatcher. To get this method working, we need to provide it a URL of the next component. In our case, this should be just simply back to the root of our application and the name of the next JSP. So that first line will set up the dispatcher to when it's triggered to go to the next component. Then when we're ready for it to go to the next component, we'll use the forward method of the dispatcher. We'll say dispatcher.forward and we'll pass along the request and the response objects to the next component. Let's see how that will work in practice. Back in Eclipse, we're going to want to do request dispatcher. You can call it anything you want, but for short we'll just call it dispatcher equals request dot get request dispatcher and let's use a variable called URL which we have not yet defined as we'll see in a moment okay a couple things are off in this line URL cannot be resolved request dispatcher cannot be resolved let's fix that one first we need to import the request dispatcher URL we don't have that variable let's create a local variable called URL rather than a field. Okay, put it right here, but let's take copy this out. Command X. I'm going to put it up here, up here where I declared the string as well. I don't know. By default, let's just set it to a blank string. Now, what do we want that to be? If the guess is correct, we want URL to go to correct dot JSP. If it is incorrect, we're going to want the URL to go to guess.jsp to show us another form. Now one thing is that our JSPs are stored in the web content, which is the root folder of our application. The correct path to get back to the root folder from a servlet requires us to put a slash in our URLs. So let's do that now. To finally pass control to the next component, we also need to then trigger the dispatcher to forward to the appropriate URL and pass along the request and the response. So we've received the input data and converted it to game numbers which are useful to us in our program. We compared the guess and the target and set the appropriate message depending on the outcome. We've also, using a URL local variable, set the appropriate destination. And once everything is finished, control should be passed along to the destination URL using these two lines of code. We got the input data. We compared the target and the guess. If guess is incorrect, we have set the message, increment the number, 
pass control to guess.jsp and if the guess is correct we've set the message and pass the control to correct.jsp. Let's think if everything is going to go okay in terms of the input and the output. Of course we've received the input values guess, target, and guesses. We read them as request parameters and we pulled them off of the request object and made them local game numbers. On the output side, well the target's already on the request object as a parameter, but the message and the number of guesses is not stored. The number of guesses was a parameter, but it may have been changed if we got an incorrect guess. And the message was created during the game circuit. How are we going to pass these on as output to the destination? Well, one way to do that is to use request attributes. Hear the difference, attributes, not parameters. When passing control to another component, we need to be able to pass necessary data. One way to pass data from a controller to the next component within the same request response cycle is to use the request component. If you recall, in our dispatcher.forward method, we pass the request object as we pass control. The request object comes with some methods that allow us to set data objects called attributes and then get these attributes when needed. The syntax is basically request.setAttribute, provide that with a name, maybe message, and then put the value in, the value of our message variable. One thing to watch for, attributes must be objects. Primitives are not allowed. We need to create some attributes. Request dot set attribute. Let's call this one message. So now there Imagine we put a box into the request object called message with the label on it message and inside that box is the current value of the message. One of three things. Let's also put the game number guesses as an attribute. Notice this will work because in this local servlet, guesses is a game number. It's not an integer, it's an object, so we can add it as an attribute. In this video, we have created our servlet. We've learned how to forward control from the servlet to the next component using the request dispatcher object. And we've learned how to pass data as request attributes. This has been a Piercy production.